Well, obviously, we've seen the reporting on the president's speech. You know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, throughout the course of this speech, uh, Assad manages to blame a foreign conspiracy that's so vast with regard to the situation in Syria that it now includes the Arab League, most of the Syrian opposition, the entire international community. He throws responsibility on everybody but back on himself. And with regard to his own responsibility for the violence in Syria, he seems to uh, aggressively deny any responsibility or any hand in the role of his own security forces. So, you know, again, uh, he's doing everything but what he needs to do, which is to meet the commitments that Syria made to the Arab League, to end the violence, to pull tanks and heavy weapons out of cities, to allow journalists in, to release political prisoners, and to allow a real space for political dialogue to, to, to take place. So that's what we're looking to see in, in Syria, and obviously this was an, an effort to deflect the attention of his own people from the real problems. Does that worry you that he hasn't changed his tone at all? I think if it just confirms us in our view that it's time for him to step aside, that he's not the guy who can lead Syria in the direction that it needs to go. Does it worry you that he's kind of it, he seems to be setting up sort of this scenario of it's an us against the rest of the world? You could, you could almost see what he was trying to achieve there sort of rallying support because the whole world is out to get us. I mean, does that concern you? Well, you know, sadly, Cami, this is not new from him. He's been doing this all along. You know, in, in, in March, when all of this started, he had an opportunity to do what some other leaders have done and start a, start a dialogue and really address his people's concerns. And even from, from that moment in, and escalating ever since, it's all been about uh, the enemies of Syria rather than truly understanding that this is an internal movement. It's coming from the Syrian people who want change, who are sick of uh, corruption, sick of a government that doesn't represent all the needs of all the people and a government that is uh, for him and his cronies, not for the Syrian people. So, you know, and the fact that not only is he blaming everybody else, but he's taken up arms against his own people. He's responsible for this, for this violence. So, from our perspective, it's not new, uh, and it's also obviously not, not new that he is uh, refusing to take any responsibility for the actions of his own security forces, who are the instigators of the violence. So you follow up on there? I mean, you, she asked if you were concerned about what he said. I mean, the opposition has seized on the fact that he's vowed to crush their terrorism with an iron fist. Does that worry you that the, the crackdown is going to be as strong as ever? Or what kind of intentions do you see there? It's worried us all along the kinds of violence he is uh, perpetrating against his own people. You know, this is this is a guy who's overseeing a security apparatus that has tanks in every town and village that is using those tanks on innocent civilians, that has security forces that are rampaging in towns, that is arresting and torturing uh, er, you know, members of the political opposition, that has thousands of, of political prisoners. So, you know, it's already an iron fist. The question is, is he going to meet any of these commitments that he's made? Uh, the Arab League is, is it's doing its best to try to provide space for this opposition, but clearly he's defiant. Can we just, can we just build on what Tammy said? Um, you mentioned that this tone dates back to March, so that's just almost 10 months of political inaction and violent repression. Um, are we at, a, at an end point now for diplomatic efforts with this guy? Well, the United States has been saying for some months, I think, dating back, I uh, can't remember exactly, I think it was August or September, that uh, we had given him an opportunity to be the guy to lead change, that rather than doing that, he has uh, used violence against his own people, and so we believe that it's time well overdue for him to step aside. That's a different matter than whether uh, this Arab League initiative is worth giving a try to see whether they could uh, bring the Assad regime to implement the promises that it made. And we see a very, very, very incomplete picture there, as we've talked about all week. Okay, but just, just one, one second. Um, just, um, would you be supportive of further diplomatic efforts? It just seems that time and time again he's used each 
outreach effort as a, as a stalling tactic, as a strategy to kind of keep the international community at bay while he continues with the crackdown and continues to fail to deliver on any meaningful political reform. So how would you approach continued efforts to, uh, would, you, would you lend support to continued efforts in this vein? We've made clear we think the man needs to step aside. We've made clear that we want, we will continue to work with allies and partners around the world, particularly those in the region, trying to open space for political change, uh, getting the violence to end, that we need to increase the pressure on the regime, the economic and political pressure. That's the, what we have been leading with our own sanctions, with our efforts to encourage others to step up their sanctions, as we've seen. Um, but what we did support yeah. this Arab League initiative because they made promises, he made promises to them. We wanted to see if they could be implemented. We're seeing this incomplete picture. They are going to make their own evaluation uh, on the weekend, and we have made clear that we will continue to work with the Arab League and other partners uh, on the way ahead, including uh, what more the international community can do to try to increase the pressure to end the violence and to allow space for change in Syria. But just finally, what has been the sum total then of these 10 months of diplomatic efforts? What have they actually accomplished? Well, I think his regime is feeling the sweet, the squeeze. I mean, many countries have stopped trading with him. I'm not, I'm not talking about the sanctions. I'm talking about outreach, whether it was Turkey, whether it was the Arab League, whether it was some of his Gulf neighbors. What, what have they done if you take all of them together since March, have they accomplished anything for the people in Syria? Well, clearly we have not had success. I think that's obvious from the situation on the ground. Please. I mean, he had very harsh words toward the Arab League. Uh, so uh, obviously he's, they are, the regime is not going to cooperate with the mission, the monitoring mission by the Arab League. So why do you continue to have confidence in their ability and whatever report they're coming up on the 19th of this month? Said, we have said that we thought that they took on quite a lot of responsibility to do what they could to try to open space, to try to bear witness to what was going on, to do an honest reporting of what's going on. We want to give them the opportunity to make that report, to make their own evaluation, to share their conclusions with all of the rest of us. And frankly, um, you know, that will strengthen all of us going forward in our resolve to continue to increase the pressure and do what we can. So, you know, it's, it is a matter of letting the Arab League complete this mission as it plans to do on Friday and Saturday to make its own evaluation and then all of us can take stock based on what we've seen. But the integrity of the, you know, if I'm, oh, go ahead. Why is it an incomplete picture? You could say, whose fault is it that it's an incomplete picture? No, the point I meant there, Jill, was, as we've been saying all week, we've seen some sporadic incidents in Syria where the presence of the monitors over the last couple of weeks have allowed the Syrian opposition to feel comfortable enough to come into the streets and make its views known. We saw big demonstrations about 10 days ago, a week ago, but those have been few and far between, and at the same time, we've seen uh, Syrians continue to die at the hands of the security regime. Uh, we've seen the security situation not improve. We've seen uh, the um, heavy weaponry, et cetera, that is in place all over Syria, not pulled back as they promised. Journalists have not been allowed in, and we still have uh, a 1,000 plus political prisoners in Syrian jails, including some very prominent ones with reports of torture. So the point is that uh, the Assad regime promised that it would meet four commitments to the Arab League. It has not met any of them, which is to say, but which is not to say that the monitors where they have been able to be present, where they have been able to operate, haven't already begun to prove the point that when they feel safe, the Syrian people will go out into the streets and make their views known, and it is Assad who is denying them that right uh, through his violence. Victoria, the, the observers are uh, under attack. Uh, to the, yesterday, a group of Arab League uh, observers uh, were attacked uh, or was attacked by unknown protesters in Syria. Who's responsible, do you think, for this uh, attacks? 
I think we're not in a position, obviously, to say who attacked the monitors, but this is, this is the issue. The violence has not, has not ended. The violence continues, and the Arab League presumably will draw, its, draw conclusions from that when it makes its report at the end of the week. Luck. On the UN Security Council, what do you expect uh, from their discussions on Syria, especially since the last time you didn't get the hoped-for targeted measures with, with the support of China and Russia? Well, the Security Council is having another session on, on Syria this morning. I would guess that uh, Ambassador Rice will have something to say in New York after that session concludes. I think you know where we are, Locke, that we continue to believe that it is overdue for the Security Council uh, to make a strong statement in support of peace and security and in support of uh, the moves that we all can all take together to help the, uh, the people of Syria. We have a weak Russian draft on the table. We have consultations going on about how to strengthen it. So let us let us see if those lead anywhere today in uh, in New York and, and let them report. Any New reason York. for optimism? You know, I think I think our sense is that uh, we're going to need to see the conclusion of this Arab League mission. We're going to need to see uh, their report. We're going to need to have that report uh, influence the views of the international community going forward. Please. Yeah, uh, Ambassador Force uh, has uh, expressed concern regarding the security and safety of the embassy and the staff in Damascus. And we were told that he conveyed this concern to the Syrian officials. How far the Syrian were responsive to his concern? Well, my understanding is that Ambassador Ford made uh, renewed demarches in the last couple of days about the physical security uh, of the embassy. I don't know that the Syrian government has responded uh, to those to those demarches yet. My understanding is that they had not yet. But we, like a number of other embassies uh, in Damascus, are concerned uh, about uh, whether or not the the um, the uh, environment around our missions is well enough protected. Do you have any reason to doubt the Syrians uh, resolve to protect the American embassy or any other diplomatic missions in Damascus? Based on, based on history, Saeed, based on history we, we, yes. we, as you know, we had, we had a bad incident in the fall. We've right. worked with the Syrians since. We're now asking for more support, and we'll see if the Syrian government is forthcoming. But I'm not saying that they shouldn't provide it, but given the fact that you've called this regime illegitimate and said it should step down, how can you then ask to it to be legitimate in the sense that it should provide security? I mean, you've already said this is a legit illegitimate regime. So where does it get its legitimacy to provide support to anybody? I'm not saying that they shouldn't be doing it. but uh, Clearly, they have the security forces available use less of them on their own people and more of them to protect diplomatic missions, including uh, in conformity with the Vienna Convention. We protect their mission and their people here, and we expect the same for our mission and our people there. Please. I, um, <clears throat> I just actually, for some clarification on this legitimate, illegitimate uh, discussion, a minute ago you said we've made clear that we think the man needs to step aside. Um, I don't, Bashar Assad is not going to step aside. So I, I guess what I'm wondering is, is the United States calling for his ouster? Uh, we, we have been clear about this. The president said it in August. We think that this is not the guy to lead this country in a democratic transition. We have made clear that we think it is time for a dialogue that does not include him. We are not dictating how this needs to go forward, but we're simply saying that in terms of uh, our confidence that he can lead his country in a better direction, that's over.